we are back to the second part of the chemical reaction for lower part of the IG, uh, secondary, which is the IGCSC, lower part of the IGCSE program. So we, there are so many different types of chemical reactions. Okay, there are even complex reactions. So we're not going to go into that. We're only going to take three simple, basic type of uh, chemical reaction. And we started with the first one, which is combustion reaction. And after that, we look at combination reaction, and then we look at decomposition reaction. So for the purpose of this class, we only go to concentrate on these three types of uh, chemical reaction. So the first one is combustion reaction. The second one is uh, com a combination reaction. And the third one is uh, decomposition reaction. Now let's take a look at the first one, which is the combustion reaction. We already have an idea of what combustion reaction means, what combustion means. We always say combustion means burning. Let's atomize with a different color. Okay? We say combustion means burning. We already know this. We say combustion means what? Burning. Right? Combustion means burning. Like when you're burning something. So it usually includes like a fuel. When you're burning something like a gas in your house, you're cooking food. You know, you burn from your gas cylinder, you burn the gas fuel, right? So it's usually like fuel reacting with oxygen. Okay, anything burning has to do with the fuel reacting with the oxygen. The fuel could be even in form, in form of firewood, in form of dead woods. They can act as fuel, reacting with oxygen, in presence of oxygen, we produce uh, other substances like carbon dioxide, like water, and other things like heat energy, and so on and so forth. So, combustion reaction means burning. So, the simple explanation for that is uh, burning. And burning entails fuel with air, burning fuel with air. Okay, burning entails. Uh, reactive fuel, reactive fuel with uh, presence of oxygen. Okay? The energy that is stored in the fuel, the energy that is stored in the fuel, like in your gas, the energy that is stored there burns to produce heat energy. The energy in the fuel, the chemical energy in the fuel, the fuel contains what we call the chemical energy. The chemical energy in the fuel burns with in presence of oxygen to produce, uh, to give us uh, uh, the other product. Like here, we say we have chemical energy in the fuel. Chemical, chemical energy in the fuel. This chemical energy in presence of oxygen we burn to produce what? To produce other substance like uh, carbon dioxide, like uh, water, like heat, heat energy, chemical energy. Fuel contains chemical energy. The food we, we eat contains chemical energy. Okay? This chemical energy in fuel like fuel petroleum like petrol like gasoline like diesel all those petroleum product byproduct they all contain what we call the chemical energy mm -hmm. now the fuel contains the chemical energy it burns in presence of oxygen to give us what carbon dioxide so i give in symbol now carbon dioxide co2 carbon dioxide when you burn it it produces co2 carbon dioxide it produces water Okay, let's write here, plus water, plus heat energy. Water, let's use the symbol H2O, plus water, okay, there plus energy. This energy is a form of heat, so but we just use energy to connote, to represent it. Because when something is burning, it produces uh, energy, it produces heat energy, it produces heat energy. And uh, this energy is by... Uh, as a, it's, a, it's called exothermic energy, exothermic energy. So, in the, in terms of combustion, this is what happens. Combustion reaction is a type of reaction when a fuel substance, this fuel substance could be in form of petroleum byproduct, could be in form of wood, like dead dry wood, okay, Run, uh, burning in presence of oxygen or burning supported by oxygen, and then to produce other byproduct, okay. Combustion in combustion reaction. In, uh, fuel react with oxygen to form new substance and uh, release energy. 
they form new substances like carbon dioxide, like water, and then they release energy to the environment. In combustion reactions, the fuel burn in presence of oxygen to produce new substance. Okay, these ones are called the reactor, the fuel. The fuel could be a good example could be like methane. Uh, CH4. If you study organic chemistry, you will know how to. You know this CH4 plus O plus O2. For example, oxygen. We produce. We give all these byproducts that we've already itemized. We give all these byproducts like carbon dioxide, like water, like uh, release of energy. So combustion reaction produces energy, heat energy, and it releases heat energy to our environment. It releases heat energy to our heat energy to our environment. Is that okay? So that's for combustion co uh, combustion reaction. Now let's go to the second one, which is combination reaction. I think for the sake we have to rewrite them somewhere down here, or we we use an arrow to show now what we are describing. Okay. Now we are dealing with combination reaction. In combination reaction, two substances they will join together to form one new compound. New substance, two new two substances we come together, we react together to form one new compound, to form one or more uh, compounds, right? That's called combination reaction. Two things, like you say, A plus B to produce C. Is for example, for example, it's like you say A plus B. Okay, these are the reactants, A plus B. They produce a new compound. The compound might be CD, we might, we might be together, or AB. Okay, to produce a compound called AB, together like this. No plus between them. To produce a new compound called AB, for example. So this is a combination reaction. Combination reaction is when two substances <coughs> join together to produce a new substance, or a new compound, to produce a new compound. Is that okay? It could be two new two elements joining together to produce a compound. Because there are only two substances involved, the name of the compound will always end with IDE. The name of the compound will always end with IDE. I think we've studied this ID like sodium chloride, sulfur, sulfur dioxide. Okay, let's say the reaction of sulfur, sulfur plus oxygen. The reaction of sulfur plus oxygen. The reaction of sulfur plus oxygen will produce sulfur dioxide. See, two substances join together to produce a new compound. This new compound is quite different from this new compound will be different from from the the original substance. This is called sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is a chemical substance that is completely different from sulfur and completely different from oxygen. Sulfur dioxide is a sulfur dioxide is a compound that is completely different from sulfur and outrightly different from oxygen. Okay? So this is a this is called combination reaction. This is called combination reaction this is called combination reaction this is called combination reaction okay sorry for, sorry about that for the interruption this is sulfur dioxide a new substance that is outrightly formed or completely formed which is different from this is a new compound this is a compound okay these were individual, uh, the reactors were individual element. They react together to form a new compound, to form a compound. So you can see this is called combination reaction. This is an element, sulfur is an element. Okay, so the reactors are elements, different elements, joining together, reacting together chemically to produce a different, a different substance altogether. This is an element and this is also an element. This is also an element. So two elements or two atoms of uh, different elements react together to produce what? A compound. To produce a chemical substance, a compound. So if we use symbol to represent this, if we use symbol to represent this, we will have this. Sulfur is S plus O2 plus O2. 
you get sulfur dioxide. You get what? Sulfur dioxide. You get sulfur dioxide. S O. You get sulfur dioxide. Is that okay? You get sulfur dioxide. So this sulfur dioxide is chemically different from sulfur and chemically different from uh, oxygen. It's physically also different from sulfur. It's also physically different from sulfur and also physically different from oxygen. So you see a new compound is formed. This type of reaction is called combination. This type of reaction is called what? Combination reaction. It's called combination. It's called combination reaction. This type of reaction is called combination combination reaction. This type of reaction is called the combination reaction. Okay? Okay. This type of reaction is called combination reaction. This type of reaction is called combination reaction. Okay, now let's uh, let's uh, still on that. Why is it? Why is this so? Because there are only two substances involved. So the name of the compound will always end with IDE. See, sulfur dioxide. It ends with what? IDE. Look at it. IDE. If there are only two substances, sodium plus uh, plus chlorine, sodium chloride, chloride. It ends with IDE. If there are only two substances evolved, there are only two substances evolved. It ends with IDE. Sulfur dioxide is a strong, smelly, and harmful gas. So they they produce a gas. Okay, it's a strong, smelly gas and also harmful. Also harmful. Sulfur dioxide is harmful and is a strong, smelly gas. Now let's take a look at exam other examples of combination reaction. Rusty is an example of combination reaction. Rusty. So let's take a look at specific example of combination reactions. Okay? Examples. One, rusty. Rusty is an example of combination reaction. Let's change there. Rusty. Rusty is an example of combination reaction. Why is that so? The iron combines with oxygen, rusty. Why is that so? Because, because iron Iron combined with oxygen during the rusty process. Iron plus oxygen. Okay? They combine together to produce a whole new compound. To produce a whole new compound. So this is an example of combination reaction. This is an example of a combination reaction. So they will form iron oxide. They combine uh, iron combines with oxygen uh, in the air to form what we call the iron oxide. So your product will be what? Iron oxide. Iron oxide. Iron oxide. See, it ends with because there are two elements involved. It ends with IDE. The product form ends with IDE. Hello, can you hear? Yes. Okay. So, the form... Yes. Okay, okay, good. Rusty is an example of a combination reaction. How? In rusty, iron will react with oxygen to form iron oxide. Iron will react with oxygen to form iron oxide. Is that okay? The iron oxide, uh, iron oxide flakes off until eventually all the iron has uh, combined with oxygen to form 
iron oxide. So all the uh, all the iron will eventually combine with oxygen to form iron oxide until there is no any iron left. If you have an iron metal and uh, what ray beats it and is exposed air comes in contact with it after a while the metal will start to rust the metal will start to rust gradually it will start gradually from one part until it spreads to every part of the iron all the iron becomes uh, have would have come in contact with oxygen and they've rusted to form iron oxide the rusted metal you see now is no longer the iron is the iron oxide okay is the iron oxide when a substance combines chemically with oxygen the chemical reaction remember we call it a uh, oxidation so oxidation is also an example of combination reaction so when when any any compound or any substance or any element combined with oxygen we call it oxidation we call it oxidation reaction so we can see say oxidation is uh, also an example of combination reaction oxidation reaction any substance whether sulfur combined with oxygen iron combined with oxygen okay sulfur combined with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide iron combined with oxygen to form sulfur oxide to form iron oxide all of these are called they are actually a type of oxidation reaction oxidation is uh, when oxygen combined with something reduction is when oxygen is re removed from uh, a, a substance or a compound Reduction is when you remove oxygen from a compound. Oxidation is when you add oxygen to a compound or to an element. So we get that clear. So oxidation processes are examples of a combination reaction. They are examples of combination reaction because we are adding oxygen to a, an element or a compound. Now let's go to the third one. Remember this one was the second one uh, Remember, this was the second one. Combination reaction was the second one. This was number two, so we can put number two here. And the first one was uh, the first one was this one we studied. Uh, this one, uh, number one, com combustion reaction that that attains all of these studies. These are combustion reaction. Now we've done the combination reaction. Now let's go to number three, which is called the. Uh, uh, decomposition reaction okay so this one we can write now decomposition decomposition reaction okay there are other types of reaction like neutralization reactions and so on and so forth and then you go to study in the later part of this course is that okay but now for this level, let's just limit it to these uh, few things that we have. Okay, now let's take the, th the th uh, third one, which is decomposition reaction. Decomposition reaction. Decomposition reaction. Okay, so what is decomposition reaction? Decomposition actually means break it down. It means breaking down. It simply means breaking something down. So we can, uh, it means break it down. Decomposition means break it down. So when a compound is broken down, a large compound is broken down into smaller substances, then such is termed decomposition. Remember, it's almost like opposition, or opposite of a combination. Combination is you take two smaller substances to form one big compound. And decomposition is like you take the one big compound and break it down into smaller compounds or into smaller into elements. So decomposition simply means break it down. Okay? In chemical reaction, uh, compounds can be broken down into smaller uh, smaller two compounds or into smaller three into smaller units okay 
into smaller substances by what? By what? By heating. Break it down by heating. This is simply decomposition. By heating. So when you break down a large compound into smaller units or smaller molecules or smaller uh, compounds, by heating, it's called decomposition. It's called decomposition. Now we're going to look at some examples. We're going to look at some examples of this decomposition reaction. Uh, let's say, for example, if you when if you take sodium hydrogen carbonate, that is a baking soda. The baking soda, sodium hydrogen carbonate. Let's write it out. You can heat it and break it down into smaller units. Sodium. The baking soda you use in your house to bake bread, to make uh, cake and other things, sodium is called sodium hydrogen carbonate. So if you take sodium hydrogen carbonate, sodium hydrogen carbonate, sodium hydrogen carbonate, So if you heat it, it's going to break into smaller compounds. Into small. This is a very large compound, right? Sodium hydrogen carbonate. So if you heat this, you're going to break it down into smaller compounds. The sodium hydrogen carbonate, we can, in bracket, we call it uh, baking soda. It's called baking soda. So the baking soda you buy every time, it's a... Uh, it's, it's real chemistry name is sodium hydrogen carbonate. Baking soda, soda. Baking soda. So if we can, we can break it down into smaller units, into smaller substances by heating, right? It will decompose to give us sodium. It will give, uh, decompose to give us sodium and uh, uh, carbonate and carbon dioxide. So when you heat this, you will get, when you heat this, let's say you heat, we apply heat, we'll get sodium separate, we'll get sodium separate. So if you heat this, you get sodium. We'll get sodium. We'll get, carb we'll get carbonate. So you get sodium as a different element. See, it's reduced to smaller units. Sodium hydrogen carbonate, when you heat it, it will decompose into sodium. Then carbonate, 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 and also carbon dioxide so you also get a carbon dioxide from this to decompose it to carbon dioxide carbonate and sodium carbon dioxide carbon dioxide carbon dioxide Okay, so it will decompose it to, see, our baking soda, when we heat it, this, this type of reaction is called decomposition reaction. You take sodium hydrogen carbonate, your baking soda, you heat it, it will decompose it to smaller units, which are sodium, carbonate, and carbon dioxide. So that's, that type of reaction is a, a decomposition reaction. Now let's symbol, let's, let me say if I have uh, A, B together as a compound, Why I say it was opposite com the combination reaction. If you hit here and then you get, it decomposes it to A and separately and B also separately. This is a, an example of a decomposition reaction. This is an example of a decomposition reaction. This is a large compound. You hit it, it, it reduces it to element A and element B. This type of reaction is a, a decomposition reaction. Okay, but the reverse form is a combination. The reverse format is a combination, the one we gave before. The reverse format, you say A plus B, you get AB. This is combination reaction. 
but when you heat it and break it down, it becomes a decomposition reaction. Okay, so that's what we have. And at the end of the day, we hope you've uh, uh, got it the lessons for this chapter. We're done with this chapter 9. Our next chapter will be rocks and weathery. Okay, our next chapter will be rocks and weathery uh, for this science. For this science. Is that okay? So with this, we come to the end of this chapter. Re remember the names of compounds that gives us clues to elements and that they contain we do in chapter 1. Remember in chapter 1, we talked about physical change and chemical change. Okay. And then remember, uh, in, I, I say chapter 1, sorry, part 1 of this chapter. And then we also talked about in chemical change, new substances are formed, which have different properties to the original substances. And uh, chemical change is not easy to re uh, reverse. It's not easy. In most of the time, you cannot reverse it. And then the mass of the individual substances may change, but the overall mass remains the same in a chemical change. The overall mass remains the same. And the larger amount of heats are needed to produce in any uh, produced or needed in a chemical reaction. We've done this in part one of this chapter. And then we also looked at the use of chemical equations to represent chemical reactions. And then the reactions are written, we wrote the reactants at the left side and the products on the right side. We've done all of this in this chapter. Some atoms remain together in groups in a reaction. Some of these are, uh, groups are hydroxides, carbonates, sulfates, nitrates. We've talked about all of this in the part one of this video. And then uh, we have also talked about the name of compounds. Uh, we say the name of a compound gives us clue to the elements that it contains. If you see sodium hydrogen carbonate, you know the elements that will be there. Uh, so the name of the compound tells us the elements that it has. And their combination, we, today we looked at types of reaction, the basic type, uh, combination, reaction, combustion reaction, combination reaction, anti-composition reaction, and the three types of chemical reaction for this level, for your level. And then uh, we, we also talked about chemical reaction in which a substance combined with oxygen is called oxidation reaction. In any type of chemical reaction in which a substance combined with oxygen, we call it a, we call it a, com, a combust, a oxidation reaction. We say rust is an example of that uh, type, okay? So with this, we come to the end of our class today. Thank you.